this first poem was inspired by pure frustration the other day when I was trying to email my niece and I couldn't think of a very simple everyday common word and I just couldn't dig it out of the dregs of my mind. I was totally, totally frustrated. And these little lapses are becoming more and more frequent <laughs> as I get older. Is it off? It's on now. Okay, I was, wasn't speaking into it. It's called Words. I am a poet, a wordsmith. Words flow through my veins as my life's blood lodge in my brain. There they evaporate like the morning mist in the sunlight. I am driven to the dictionary, the thesaurus, searching for a synonym for that precious word. Once found, I hold it in my hand until it can be written down on a clean sheet of paper. Only then do I realize the poem for which the word is the foundation has also evaporated. <laughs> Forgetfulness, inevitable as we age, yet discon disconcerting to a poet. What is a wordsmith without a word and a place to put it? Nevertheless, <laughs> slowly inching past the time signs, two hours, one hour, half an hour, my niece and I headed for the zip line. I'm filled with excitement and fear. Fear of the 80 steps up to the tower. Can I make it? Excitement about riding the zip line. The boredom of waiting is relieved by chatting with a woman and her son who stand in the line behind us. They mistake us for mother and daughter. We just smile at each other and do not correct them. We pass the 10 minute sign. Then we are donning our gear. With the help from my niece and an attendant, I make it up the 80 steps and we're hooked to the, to the line. The high point of the day, my niece yells, I love you as we step into space. <laughs> That same day, uh, I, every time I see someone in the streets, I think they're but for the grace of God, and I try to be sympathetic. But when you see so much of it, one after the other down Davy Street, you kind of lose that empathy, <laughs> and that's what this poem is about. What my eyes see, my mind must digest. I need to be reminded to keep an open mind. A woman sits on the sidewalk. Genuine tears trace the lines around her cheeks and mouth. Her sign reads, I have an autistic child. The only problem is, I've seen her before in a different part of the city. Then her sign read, I need an operation. Obviously, she's a liar. Also obvious, she does have a problem. Where is my empathy? Keep an open mind. It could be me. Next to her is a young man whose sign reads, out of work logger. I ask him if he was a faller, and he says yes. I ask him if he started as a whistle punk or a choker man. He looks at me blankly. This man is no logger. But circumstances brought him here. Keep an open mind. It could be me. In the next block, I almost trip over the body of a man, of a, over a body lying on the sidewalk. The sign beside him simply reads, hungry. He's oblivious, a needle still stuck in his arm. I feel his desperation. He does not know any better, I tell myself. Keep an open mind. It could be me. Of course, they all know better. They do not have to live like this. No amount of rationalization can stop the disgust that seeps into my pores, flows through my veins, and closes my open mind. Mm. Yeah,